Hello students, welcome to another video of bioinformatics series. In this video we will be discussing Blossom matrices. So let's start. Before we go any further, let's understand some basic concepts of Blossom matrix or Blossom series. So first is, Blossom stands for block substitution matrices. I'll be discussing this blocks in the uh, next slides. It was created by Steven Hennikoff and Zora Hennikoff. It was derived from local ungapped alignments of distantly related sequences. All matrices are directly calculated and no extrapolation is used like in the PAM matrices we have used the extrapolation method. And the last is you have to compare observed frequencies of each pair to expected frequencies then the log values will be created. What it means is we have to compare the observed frequencies of amino acid pair and then we have to compare those expect, uh, observed frequencies with the expected frequencies and then we have to calculate the log values and then we have to generate a log matrix. This matrix is known as Blossom matrix. So, so like I said previously, Hennikoff and Hennikoff have introduced Blossom matrix which led to the marked improvement in alignments. Now, Blossom matrices with high number are designed for comparing closely related sequences while those with the low numbers are designated for comparing distant related sequences. For example, Blossom 80 is used for closely related alignments and Blossom 40 is used for the more distantly related alignments. Now, what is the concept behind generating a Blossom matrix or how the Blossom matrix is generated? Like suppose uh, before generating a ma Blossom matrix, we have to define a percentage identity value that below this value we will be taking sequences or above this value we will be taking the sequences. So like suppose uh, we have we are generating a Blossom 80 matrix. So we have to take all the sequences which are showing greater than 80% uh, similarity and merge them. And then we have to compare all the sequences which are showing less than 80% similarity. To more understand this, uh, let's go through this paragraph. The matrices were created by merging or clustering all sequences that were more similar than a given percentage into a single sequence. Suppose, so what does this say? It means if we, have, if we are taking 80% the criteria, then we have to uh, select all the sequences which are showing more than 80% similarity and then have, we have to merge them and then we have to uh, take it as a single sequence and then compare those sequences that were all more divergent than the given percentage value. It means that all the remaining sequences which are showing percentage similarity of less than 80% and we have to compare those sequences. The percentage used was appended to the name giving Blossom 80 for example where sequences that were more than 80% identical were clustered. Now another example to explain it further. Now the block database. The block database contains multiple alignment of conserved regions and protein families. Blocks are multiple aligned or ungapped segments corresponding to most highly conserved regions of protein. The blocks for the blocks database were made automatically by locking for the most highly conserved region in group of proteins represented in the ProSite database. These blocks are then calibrated against the Swiss plot database to obtain the measure of random distribution of matches. It is these calibrated blocks that make up the blocks database. The database can be searched to classify protein and nucleotide sequences. Basically what does this slide mean? It means that the blocks that, that I have talked in the previous slide, we have to look for the conserved sequences or the conserved portion of a protein or anything that, that we are generating for which we are generating a matrix we have to look for those blocks which are conserved and we can get the data from ProSite database which uh, which stores the data of conserved sequences so this is about block database now this is uh, a representation of a block database that we have to select the uh, sequences or the portion of the sequences which is showing zero gap like here we have mentioned the gap less alignment blocks so we have to select only these portion or the blossom matrix will be created using only these portion now what are the steps of creating of creating a blossom matrix let's suppose we have six sequences sequence one this is sequence one 
this is sequence 2, this is sequence 3, this is sequence 4, 5 and 6. Now the first step is we have to count the frequency of each amino acid. Each amino acid we have 3 amino acid A, B and C. So for calculating the amino frequency of amino acid A, we have to calculate we have to count how many times A is coming in this sequence. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So A is coming 14 times. Similar wise B we have to count 1, 2, 3, 4. So B is coming 4 times and C is coming 6 times. So total number is 24. Now the second step is to count the frequency of each amino acid pair. Amino acid pair is AA, AB, AC, BB, BC and CC. So we have to calculate how many times this A is, AA is coming in a column wise manner. So like suppose we have to calculate the value of CC, how many times a pair of CC is coming, then we have to check all the columns. In the first column there is uh, value is 0, second column the value is 0 because there is no C present, in the third column there is 2 C present so there is one pair, this one one pair is present and in the fourth column there are 1, 2, 3, 4 C's are present so uh, what are the number of possible uh, outcomes or number of uh, how many times CC can occur? Like these two occur, one, then these two occur, two, then these two occurs, this one and this one, three, then this one and this one can occur, four, then this one and this one can occur, five. So likewise, this is the total. We are getting seven values of CC pairing, BC are we getting six, and the respective values are filled in the table. So total value is. 60. Now the third step is count the observed frequency of amino acid pair. These are these are the amino acid pairs. So we have to calculate the observed frequencies of these amino acids. So for AB, if we have to calculate the observed amino acid frequency would be 8 upon 60 or 8 divided by 60. How we are getting that? We are getting AB. Frequency of AB is 8, and the total number is 60. So 8 divided by 60 is we are getting AB observed frequencies. Now we have to calculate the expected frequencies of, of the amino acid pair. So if we have to calculate the uh, expected amino acid frequency of AB, we can calculate from this table. This formula is used. How we are getting this? This is 14 divided by 24 because expected is AB. So we have to calculate the value of AB and then A and then B. So the value of frequency of A is 14 upon 24. Then similar wise, the value of the frequency of B occurring is 4 upon 24. Now why we are multi multiplying it with 2? We, we are multiplying it with 2 because we are considering, uh, likewise in the PAM uh, matrix, we have considered that the mutation of A to B is equal to or equal probable to B to A. So we are multiplying it by 2. So factor 2 is there because A mutated to B and B mutation to A, both substitution are considered equally probable. Let's move further. Now after getting this value, we have getting we have got the AB expected value, then we have to calculate the logarithm value using this formula. 2 log base 2 AB, AB denotes the two different amino acids, so in this case, uh, 2 is similar, 2 is a, from the formula, then A value we can get 8 upon 60 and then from the my other amino acid is B, so we are getting 196 upon 576, how we are getting this 197? It is the same, uh, like, like the, from this formula we are getting this value. I think this should be 112, 112 upon 576, it has been written wrong here, so this should be 2 into 8 upon 60 into 112 upon 576. So here in this table I have calculated all the values of the possible amino acid pair. Observed frequency have we calculated and expected frequency have calculated and then we have calculated the logarithmic value. These are the different logarithmic values of the different amino acid possible amino acid pairs. Now depending on these values we will put these values after rounding off these values we will put these value in a matrix and then we will call this as a blossom matrix. So we here in this case we are using an example of blossom 62. So what does this mean? It means that 62% is the percentage criteria which is used to create the uh, matrix. 
this is how the matrix looks So a uh, positive value for chemical is similar substitution, then uh, common amino acids have low weights and rare amino acids have high weights. And the concept of negative value is the same as in the PAM matrix. Now uh, what is the difference between PAM and Blossom or how do we relate these PAM matrix and Blossom matrices? Uh, they are inversely related, like uh, PAM1 will be giving the equal values or will be doing the same function what is the Blossom 100 is doing and same as PAM 250 will be doing the same functionality which Blossom 30 is doing. So basically PAM 1 or Blossom 100 decreasing value of PAM or increasing value of Blossom will be used when we have to calculate or when we have to generate small evolutionary distances or when we are using small evolutionary distances and strong similarity for short sequences. Uh, similar wise spam 250 and blossom 30 will be used when we are working with large evolutionary distances and weak similarity over strength stretched lines so this is uh, all about the blossom matrix i hope the blossom matrix the concept of creating a blossom matrix is uh, clear i'll be seeing you in the next video next video will be about the differences and uh, how the pam matrix and blossom matrix are related or what is the differences between pam matrix and blossom matrix thank you for the video Okay, bye-bye.